Howdy y'all, it's Spoonbill Paddlefish season here in Missouri. I've been open a couple days now. And them poor things don't stand a chance against modern technology, it's just sad. And I don't like it, I don't like the technology. I don't pull no punches at it, do I? DW Verts, Hick Billy Outdoors, we're gonna talk a little bit about the ancient paddlefish and their constant oppression by man. I'll be right back. So here's the deal if you don't know what a paddlefish, a spoonbill is. It's an ancient shark-like fish. No bone, just cartilage. Ancient. Been around for millions of years. Here in Missouri, we got those, we got the gar, we got the bowfin, and we got sturgeon. I think that covers the basis on those ancient fish. Spoonbill, or paddlefish, a lot of people call them, have been around forever because they can adapt pretty easily. But what they can't adapt against encroachment by man by building dams across rivers to build impoundments. And that's would be their death. No, if it wasn't for the fact that a place like our Missouri Department of Conservation has an intense stocking program. So it's kind of a put and take fishery. There are some wild spoonbill out there, some of our rivers, not very far down the road here, there's wild spoonbill, but not very many, not enough to stand any real fishing pressure. And you don't catch spoonbill, you're not even fishing for them, you're snagging for them. They don't eat bait on purpose, they don't eat lures on purpose. They go through the water with a big old mouth and they eat phytoplankton, zooplankton, whatever. They eat plankton, they eat minute microscopic particles, and they get huge. They get 100, up to 150 pounds or so. Uh, a 60 pounder used to be the big mark around here. Now I think 90 is more considered the monster mark where you're, where you're getting into big ones. At least 80 because a lot of 60s caught, which is cool. And it's a passion for folks. It's a cult. The people, they, it's like deer season. They spend their vacations around spoonbill season, around snagging season. I used to work for the Missouri Department of Conservation back in the 80s as a krill clerk on the upper lake of the Ozarks, which is the number one paddle fishery probably in the country. So my job as a krill clerk was to check these fishermen, check these spoonbill, measure them for record keeping. And that was back when the process was really starting to come into play after Truman Dam went in in 1979, he was trying to make sure they established that fishery. And it was starting to work then, and it works better now. There's a lot of spoonbill. But you snag for them. You use big old treble hooks, heavy weights. And over the years, you drug them behind the boat. And most people did this all day long. Some of these guys were big guys. All day long, you yank that rod, let it go back down, you yank it again with one or two treble hooks and a bunch of weight. Because usually there's a bunch of current. It's some work. They drink beer all night, hell, drink beer all day probably, and they snag, and it was a big deal, but the technology has changed it. Last couple, three years, the forward-seeking radar love, since Panoptic started in, what, six years ago, but the last couple, three years, people figured out that you can see those fish on your graph, on your forward-seeking sonar, and you can cast to them and snag them. Back in the day, people would snag all season, not catch a hardly a fish, and it got better. Nowadays, the guides around here, some of them don't live very far from here, and I don't care if they like me or not, because I don't like the way they're doing this, but whatever. They're taking out two or three guide trips a day with a 100% success ratio, which would limit, I think, is two spoonbill per day. And poor fish don't stand a chance. And the big thing is that the big monster fish don't stand a chance because they're easy to see on any depth find. You can see spoonbill in the summer on a flasher. Old fat, you can you can tell what they are with that uh, modern forward seeking radar. Love, they don't stand a chance. I don't see how it's right. Now they're they're putting sportsmanship into it because they're doing it with with heavy bass flipping rods instead of using the. Uh, old-fashioned solid fiberglass heavy whatever so you go up to a spot and you find these spoonbill a lot of times they're several together 
and you can throw your bait out, your bait. It's a freaking hook with a weight on it. You can throw it out, maybe a spoon. I don't know what they're doing. I don't care, truthfully. And you can watch where it goes, and you watch it go to the fish, and then you snag them. Guys, that's grassy snow, no sniper in, in Dallas, Texas. That's not fishing. Of course, snagging is not fishing anyway. It's snagging with a rod and reel. I have no problem with snagging. I don't enjoy the deal. I don't I don't even like eating spoonbill. Oh, some people love it. Some people don't like it. I'm one of them that don't like it. It's weird. But anyway, um, if you're doing it legal, and right now, this forward seeking radar love is legal with our Missouri Department of Conservation, I guess. It surely can't stay legal. I don't see how that's even possible. And I, I'm what I'm a seeing, what I'm a hearing from people, more folks are learning to do it. I don't see the challenge. Truth, I don't see much of the challenge of snagging anyway. It's always fun to watch a guy snag a log when they're going 10 mile an hour down the river and he tried to get the other end of the boat, get the reel disengaged before he gets yanked over the side. That was always enjoyable. There's more than a dozen or so snagging rods. Like There's probably hundreds of snagging rods in that river and Lake the Ozarks been yanked overboard by logs or fish, whatever. And it's cool, especially for a kid or... A new angler to go out there and catch a fish bigger than they are, or, you know, six foot long. That's cool. But not with forward-seeking sonar. There's got to be an end to this stuff someday. I, I Probably not. Technology, major companies always went out. There's money there. I don't know. They'll probably donate some money to the Conservation Department. For a 10-year paddlefish study to see a forward-seeking sonar, it's hurting. I mean, I'll give them 10 or 12 years to keep developing the technology, making it better and better and better, to take all the fun and all the skill and all the, the things that make fish and fish and even snagging, just take it away, make it easier, because this whole world is about easier. This whole world is about instant gratification. I don't have all day to go snag for spoonbill or all week. I'm going to catch one the first hour, and that's what you And used to be, oh, here I go. It's March 17th. My freaking birthday. God, I hate St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> usually, season starts 15th of March, but usually by now the fish aren't really up yet because it's cold water. It takes them all to develop. I mean, there's always fish in certain places, but they move up. They move up river to spawn. All they want to do is make babies, primordial, make whoopee in the river. <laughs> With the forward seeking sonar, you'll have to wait for them. You can go find them, maybe down a 45 mile mark or halfway down Lake of the Ozarks, you can find them and snag them. Now, you could the old technology too if you knew how. You could vertical jig them. You could. I, I show people this. 1985, when the first LCD graphs were coming out and the color graph, I said, look, if you want to, you can, over, you can, you can find them, you can snag them. You got to learn how to read this thing. Very few people listen to me. So I, I guess I was a proponent then of showing them how to do it easier or better. I never did like the idea of snagging all day. I'm too much of a wuss, I guess. That's all I got. Poor dead gum paddlefish. Ancient, primordial, big old fish. All you want to do is go up the river and make babies. And people are throwing treble hooks and sinkers at them. Now they're doing it with efficiency that rivals Carlos Hathcock snipering in 1966 in Vietnam. They don't miss. Bye, y'all. Talk to you later. God bless. Especially you spoonbillers. Unless you got forward-seeking sonar, then go... <laughs>